Good morning and welcome to the Industry 4.0 Conference on Digital Change. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to address your conference today. Industry 4.0 describes the profound changes taking place as new technologies are progressively embraced by business. This has seen developments in artificial intelligence, digitisation, robotics, 3D printing and autonomous vehicles that are already having an impact on how we live and work. While technological change like this represents a huge opportunity, we will only be able to seize it if our workforce is prepared. To that end, vocational education and training will be key to delivering the skills businesses need. We're working with organisations like Innovation and Business Skills Australia Manufacturing to connect industry to the VET sector through its work as a skills service organisation. The government receives regular advice from industry experts such as SSOs, the Australian Industry and Skills Committee and our industry reference committees. They report from the front line and know exactly what skills graduates need to succeed in today's varied workplaces. The advice provided leads to the development of training packages that underpin vital nationally recognised training. By engaging with industry leaders, we're able to ensure training packages are fit for purpose. That's why it's so important we have these systems in place to share advice and ensure we're talking to the right people. To continue to progress this work, I reappointed Professor John Pelaez as Chair of the AISC in June. I'm sure many of you will know John from his work as Chair of the Australian Advanced Manufacturing Council. John's experience in this area, coupled with his position on the Prime Minister's Industry 4.0 Task Force, makes him well qualified to guide the VET sector as industry transforms. During John's tenure with the AISC, we've already adopted a range of special cross-industry skills projects in areas such as big data, supply chain management, automation, digital skills and cyber security. The AISC has also been invested in the work to establish an Industry 4.0 Industry Reference Committee. This IRC is tasked with overseeing efforts across the training sector to adopt future-focused skills in response to greater automation and digitalisation of work practices. It's just another step we're taking to help future-proof the national training system and the workers of the future. The Industry 4.0 IRC joins the Prime Minister's Industry 4.0 Task Force in this space and includes subject matter experts in advanced manufacturing, cyber, ICT and transport among its diverse fields. When the opportunity arises, I'd encourage you to contribute your insights to the work of the IRC. The government is also engaged in a training package reform agenda, and we're focused on the design of training products that will best equip learners with the skills they need for employment and weathering the technological changes underway. By expanding the focus of training products to include broad skills like problem solving, language, numeracy and digital literacy, we impart transferable skills to students that will better enable them to adapt to changing conditions throughout their working life. This work was commissioned in November 2017 by the COAG Industry and Skills Council that I chair. The government, along with our industry stakeholders, is currently considering the feedback provided by the consultation process on the proposed improvements to training product design. We're not only committed to getting training right, but to supporting apprentices in their training through the Skilling Australians Fund. The fund, commonly referred to as SAF, provides an estimated $1.5 billion from the Australian Government from 2017-18 to 2021-22. 
It aims to grow the number of apprentices and trainees to support Australia's future productivity, jobs and growth, with an additional 300,000 apprentices. In the May budget, the government strengthened its commitment to SAF, guaranteeing a level of funding to the states in addition to revenue collected through the Skilling Australians Fund levy. Through the SAF National Partnership Agreement, states and territories will meet the government's investment dollar for dollar. Each state has the opportunity to develop projects for consideration by the Commonwealth, and they must demonstrate the industry support of these projects. I consider business and industry to be in partnership with government on skills and training. We share a common goal to have our students, your future workers, equipped with the skills industry needs. This is obviously good for business, but it's also good for those in training, because it means they're employable and have the opportunity of a long and rewarding career. Only by listening to the people who work in these sectors, who understand what skills our graduates need to succeed, will we be able to design training packages that deliver the skills industry needs. I wish you the best of luck with the remainder of your conference and look forward to working alongside you all into the future as we capitalise on this new industrial revolution. Thank you.